Good morning, everybody, and welcome to OAS PEPSEC uh, EU 2022. Uh, my name is Amit, and I am going to be your moderator today. Um, and we are having a very, very interesting topic from Adrian, who is going to be our speaker, uh, about uh, OWASP's Open Application Security and Curriculum Project. Um, this is actually a very, very interesting topic uh, because one of the major challenges that we see in the market today is a lack of uh, knowledge of, um, and, and skills for, for security sector. Um, uh, you know, everybody knows that the people who are working in security and the people who they are serving to is, is having a very different kind of ratio. Uh, we have seen mostly one is to 10, two, one is to 100 when it comes to security versus developer or um, DevSecOps engineers. Um, and today we have Adrian who is going to talk about uh, 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 an initiative from OWASP um, on how we can uh, formalize and also make it open in terms of a security curriculum, which can be helpful not only to individuals or people who are enthusiastic about security, but also to organizations who want to adopt security education as a part of their culture and also to, to make more security champions within the team. Um, Adrian is a director of uh, cybersecurity and networking research group uh, at Angela Ruskin University, and he has been associated with OASP for quite a long time. Um, and I think I'll hand it over to Adrian to talk more about himself as well as for the project. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, thank you, Amit. Uh, good, uh, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on which part of the world you're uh, dialed in from. Um, I just, my name is um, Adrian Winkles, um, and I'm the current project leader for the OWASP Open Application Security Curriculum Project. Bear with me a second, I want to figure out. Proper mouse controls. Um, and you can reach me on either the OWASP or my work email addresses. So just some background um, information. Uh, I am the director of the Cybersecurity and Networking Research Group and a security researcher at Anglia Ruskin University. And I've been involved with OWASP for about uh, 10 years. Um, I'm the Cambridge chapter leader in the UK. Um, I'm a European board member and I'm chair of the OWASP Education Committee. And my research background, it's quite diverse uh, in terms of many aspects of security, some of it application security, threat intelligence, cyber crime investigation, developing virtual crime scene, incident security incident simulations. Um, and I've worked on a number of Horizon 2020 and other related European projects to do with security as well. So on the starting point, if we I, I like to think that security is like a stack of Swiss cheese. Um, for those of you that don't know what Swiss cheese is, if you think of things like Airmental, where you have holes in it. Um, so no one security solution covers everything. So you have to layer Swiss cheese on top of each other to cover all the holes. Um, education's a bit like this as well. Um, we really do cover some aspects of a horrible word cyber in some ways but in others we don't and application security is, is one of those areas so where are the problems it's not just about infrastructure it's not just about the infrastructure layers um, it's not just about protecting the operating system it's not just about what's known in terms of vulnerabilities and it's not just about what's not known i.e zero days some of it yes is about how we use what we've got and so this is operating in, a, in regimes of poor cyber hygiene educating users but very often in a lot of traditional cyber security setups we've left something out and what is the thing we've left out it's the application or the application, should I say. So don't just take my word for it. I mean, it, it shouldn't come as news to anyone particularly, but Gartner say 75% um, of security breaches happen at the application. Um, 
They also say over 70% of security vulnerabilities exist at the application layer, not the network layer. Gartner also go on to say, if only 50% of software vulnerabilities were removed prior to production, costs could be reduced by 75%. This is our DevOps shift left argument uh, for those that um, consider such things. And it isn't just Gartner, the Gartner's Act. NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, say 92% of reported vulnerabilities are now in the applications, not in the networks. So from a security point of view, applications are the new panacea. It's not, um, and but does what we do in terms of teaching graduates, re-educating developers, do we build this in? Do we actually teach people application security? And if we do, do we do it properly? And this is also what I want to say, the cost of fixing a bug in the field is approximately per application $30,000 compared to $5,000 if you fix it during coding, if you, if you fix it earlier in the software development lifecycle. Again, back to our shift left argument. In other words, knowing how to fix vulnerabilities in the software development process is key to achieving application security. Yes, we talked about the end devices. We talked in my earlier talk, I talked, I talked about web application firewalls, and that will help some, but it is still a sticky plaster. If you do things right, you build out vulnerabilities out of your applications before they hit a production environment. So going back to some of those NIST statistics, we can start to see how many vulnerabilities are application related. So you, you can get to, the, to some of the figures by starting to add up server applications, 36%, non-server applications, 41%, in the operating system, 15%. And it's now that it becomes the remaining sort of 8% are the network, the hardware. Everything else is software related. I'm including the operating system in that, but that essentially is still software. So we're still looking at a very large part of a problem now being the application. If you like, this is the new front line in our war for achieving security. So it is, applications are the big issue. And the trend, that trend's only gonna continue. The trend is towards more vulnerabilities in the software. This could be at the center level, it can be mobile applications, it can be a concentrating hub, it could be the server backend. The point is application security is now, and the trouble is we tend to build in vulnerabilities by using unsafe libraries, unsafe development environments. And of course, we know from history, this can be open source or proprietary. Um, we've all seen um, Heartbleed, we've seen Struts, we've seen Xcode Ghost, um, we've seen um, the SolarWinds example of supply chains, um, and numerous other countless examples in the past 12 months. But the point is we are building them into applications, in some cases by unprofessional practice or not having enough due diligence. So understanding those aspects of application security are essential for anyone involved in application development and security professionals. So another way of looking at it, and perhaps an inconvenient truth, is that we only see the tip of the iceberg. Two weeks pen testing for the application, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There are everything else that's under the water. Um, security errors, business logic flaws, code flaws are all hidden 
uh, the end user, the, the end purchasing organization of the, of the software used or the in-house or external, whichever way you look at it, um, is generally using only sees the front end of the application. They don't see everything that goes on underneath. They're not involved in the development. Perhaps they don't care less about actual development. They to use the product. But from an IT professional point of view, we have to understand that we are building in the problems. So why do these application vulnerabilities occur? Two viewpoints. Um, security professionals don't know the applications. Still holds to a certain extent to this day that a lot of security people perhaps have come from an infrastructure background, so they don't might not know how applications are supposed to work. Um, they may deploy the protective solutions they've purchased, um, but are they protecting what needs to be protected? And if it's the application, if you've got a flaw in the actual way the application works, built in a vulnerability, um, it's very hard using other layers of sticky plaster, come back to our layers of Swiss cheese, to actually fix the problem. We also have um, the same point of view from um, application developers. QA professionals don't know securities, um, might be able to build great software, but if they have no inkling of what security involves, they might be using standard libraries, they might not be checking those libraries, they might be using reusing other vulnerable code. Um, and if they're not checking, so we've got two sides of a security gap. We've got a chasm that we need to cross still to this day. Another way to think about it is, is Weinberg's second law. If builders built buildings the way programmers wrote programming, um, the first woodpecker that came along would, would destroy civilization. So uh, essentially, we, can, we are building in the problems. So how do we fix this? So from a security analyst, uh, security operation point of view, how do we fix the problem? What do they need to know? Understand the data and the information held in the application. Understanding the types of user is perhaps half the battle. Involve security analysts in the design phase. Um, from a developer point of view, embrace um, secure application development, DevSecOps if you like. Um, bake security into frameworks when you can. And remember what quality means. Quality is not just, does it work? Security should also be a measure of quality as well. From a QA point of view, security vulnerabilities should be considered bugs. The same as functional bugs and tracked in the same manner. From a management point of view, in a development rollout plan, factor some time in for security and it's not i don't just mean the two weeks at the end that you pen test the black box application that is still part of your testing but building in security checkpoints in your software development process security is an added value if you don't do it it might seem that you're first to market you've got the application out there great tick the box brownie points but if a serious flaw is found, you're going to be paying a lot more later on. So for every $1, one dollar invested during development, um, you're going to save so much more after release. It will cost you $100 after release. So on. So we have bottom-up problems. We need to reach a point of equilibrium between um, board, and developer. Developers don't have time to test, to test adequately, if at all. 
Developers don't necessarily know secure coding practices. Um, there's always a pressure to be first to market. Um, and with that pressure to be first to market, you might be using uh, untested COTS component off the shelf. Um, you might be borrowing libraries to save time and money, but have those libraries been properly tested? Can, do, can you use them uh, with impunity? Um, whilst worrying, you might be building in vulnerabilities that are going to come back and bite you later on. So solution from a bottom-up point of view. Uh, de developers taught secure coding techniques. Testing. It's not just functionality or user experience, but security built in from the first principles. Sanitizing third-party products and libraries, testing throughout the, the software development lifecycle. And it isn't just about the end black box pen testing. It is also about white box testing as well. So you know what you put inside, but you can sanitize and inspect the code at various points. I talked about an equilibrium. So we've looked at it from a bottom up perspective. We can also look at it from a top down perspective. So just remember, there's always a lot of pressure to be first to market. Focus on product features and user experience but not security. Security needs to be up there with everything else. So it can be about cost reduction, ignoring the security risk. And in some organization, uh, security is not seen as a boardroom priority. And in organizations where there's a lack of a security culture, especially in engineering teams, that can spell disaster. So from a top-down solution, it's about education. Boardroom and senior management need to see this necessity to build security in from the start. Representation, ensure that there is someone representing security at board level. A SISO, to be exact. So someone perhaps, um, sometimes controversially, um, separate to the IT function. And that person should drive a security culture from the top down, because security is everyone's problem. So that's the equilibrium. Most important is to educate to build security in. Build it from the top down and build it from the bottom up. You can meet in the middle, and if you've achieved, you have to do it from both ends. So this is what we're saying. There is a need for education. I mean, there's a need for cyber education anyway to end users security where was programs cyber security is everyone's responsibility you need to educate developers the next generation so you need to build um uh application security into the computer science curriculum with cyber security only about application specifically because this is where our biggest problem lies um i've done some work with colleagues in the in the uk academic community um bcs and ic squared with a community of practice initiative making sure that computer science cyber programs include application security one of the reasons also one of the reasons we're developing the application security open framework from an OWASP perspective is to make sure because we are the go-to people for the community for application security so we should have a framework that says this is what people need to know and there is some work with SISEC this is the, um, uh, the cyber security um, cyber security um, uh, professional body Crest, as well as Cyboc. Um, this is the Cyber um, Body of Knowledge. Uh, also includes some work on application security. Probably not enough, but a starting point. So the next generation, there are some approaches we need to adopt, but we need an overall arching. And what, the other question is, what about the other existing generation? Those people that, uh, as a lot of people that have come into software development that maybe haven't followed traditional academic routes have come in um, 
either self-taught, taught by their organizations. Um, they may be very, very good coders, but do they know application security? Some might. Um, so it isn't just about training people once, it's about a continuing education program. So secure coding programs, workshops, revision follow-up. Uh, what's the old adage I always say, a dog isn't just for Christmas. So there's a need for education. This is what we're trying to establish. Um, we need security testing throughout the software development lifecycle, not just at the end. We have things like the OWASP testing guide. We have the ASVS, the application security verification system. Um, the board need to educate board members to build security from the start as a business benefit with the adage that security is everyone's responsibility. So part of, when this, part of OWASP's main purpose is to be the thriving global community that drives visibility and evolution in the safety and security of the world software. So part of that key mission is to educate not just the current generation developers or information security professionals, but the next generation. Um, particularly in acknowledging the skill shortage in the security sector. Now, a common problem with many security education programs or even traditional computer science programs is they don't necessarily address application security adequately. Yes, most will mention the OS top 10, uh, which is a start, but really that's not enough. We need to do more. Um, so, in the UK, IC Squared and the BCS, which is British Computer Society, worked on an initiative pre-COVID um, to embed secu security firmly within the computer science curriculum with an emphasis on secure, secure coding techniques. And also, obviously through my involvement, champion that initiative as well. So part of this project it's an opportunity to coordinate the expertise, the projects, interest parties, and these types of pedagogic programs and initiatives to formulate an educational strategy that meets the air level expectations required by industry. Um, so developing an educational strategy, not just for tertiary or secondary education, but also for industry as well. So this isn't just um, a what you embed in a degree programme, but also taking a more um, holistic view about what commercial training providers provide as well. Um, and we'll look at some goals about what we're going to do. So, yeah, I'm interested from an undergraduate and a postgraduate level, but also I'm interested from an apprenticeship point of view. What are the skills that people are being taught that are in industry? What do people know in industry? What do people need to know? And what should, what should we be re-educating as well? So it isn't just about traditional academia, it's also about commercial as well. So what next? What aspects of application security and skills does industry need? What problems relating to application security does the next generation of graduate software developers, computer scientists, or security analysts need to solve? So as part of that, we really need um, a core set of learning objectives, probably initially for BSc or MSc level application security curricula, but also for other educational and training providers. Part of that, and some work's done, th done this as well, um, is linking what OWASP projects are useful to help shape and support a curriculum, application security. So it isn't just enough to say, this is what you need to learn, and this is what your key um, flags are that you need to put into your programme. It's also about how can you achieve that. And part of this is determining a mechanism by which regional or local deliveries of, the, of a curriculum could be supported by the OWAS community. OWAS supporters on educational validation panels, critical friends on module design, guest lectures, training academics even perhaps, but ensuring that they're all involved. It may be having a um, 
a, li a list of uh, approved training providers that are known and have been uh, accredited almost to provide um, the proper level of AppSec training. So, proposal, potential bid initiative would be establish a core set of learning objectives for an application description that defines the educational requirements for academia and industry. Again, part of that is a gap analysis of existing and missing curricula um, and those learning requirements outlined by industry. And that's achieved through liaison with industry professionals and state-of-the-art literature. A second objective is to appraise the state of art of application security teaching and resources that are available and determine the gaps of non-coverage. That may be again another gap analysis. What existing and missing teaching resources are? This could be through discovery workshops, industry links. Uh, we know there are some good industry leading projects out there that we have as OAF projects. We know we have um, um, things like Beyond's work with um, Juice Shop. Uh, we have the previous academic work from Costas. Um, we have um, some of the other, other projects in between that develop broken web apps and test. Uh, we've had a lot of work around um, security, uh, application security resources, um, and the OS top 10, the cheat sheets, all of that well known, but is this the stuff that we're missing? It's stuff other people have developed that isn't known in the community. Objective three would be to recommend an application security open curricula. So this is to produce and disseminate a learning skills framework to support the industry and the problems they face, developing software developers, computer scientists, security analysts, incorporating DevSecOps. This would be an open framework that could be used at all levels as part of a, um, a certification level for training requirements, for example. Uh, again, include key influencers, SciSec, Cybok, ISC squared, ACM, IEEE, um, industry leading organizations as well. And for objective four, pull together OWASP's expertise projects, dedicated volunteers to engage in these types of education programs and initiatives developed as part of an educational strategy for undergraduate and postgraduate students. Most importantly, map projects to learning objectives. So what we don't know as an organization is what is being taught in some of our regional, national universities, our training providers. We don't know um, how far the AppSec message is getting out there. Um, so part of that is also understanding who is speaking to who, who may represent. Do we have a named uh, OS supporter in each tertiary college, each university that's teaching cybersecurity programs, that's teaching aspects of software development in their computer science programs? Do training providers take on board the AppSec message? Or are people using um, the AppSec materials but don't acknowledge them? Um, so some coordination. So anyone remember this from 2015? Um, this always impressed me, the, the Quick Developer's Guide, the infographic. I believe there's a new version of something similar to this, which is great. But developing this from an educational framework point of view. Because this is where I think we are, we're missing a trick. So the beneficiaries, how is this going to help people? Um, any global industrial organisation of internet facing applications um, can, through an open curriculum that's been shaped by industry, 
achieves and learning objectives in application security. Global academic and specialist training authorities can benefit from frameworks to send, from frameworks developed specifically to address um, application security requirements. International professional bodies and their members uh, benefit from focused accreditation and certification programs. International populations benefit through better protection of critical infrastructure and an internet enabled technologies. And from international economic prospects, UK and internationally benefit from an increase in available skilled So as an intended impact, we train globally IT security professionals, software developers to an industry relevant standard to ensure they're developing skills and future, uh, and again, protecting its future application security threats. Um, any global industrial organization facing with internet facing applications will have developers trained that have developed those applications with security at the heart and not as an afterthought. And again, uh, specialist training providers, academic institutions can provide new degrees, diplomas, bespoke training programs using an internationally endorsed curriculum framework. International professional bodies will have a, uh, internationally supported and respected skill base for application security. Uh, this will form a more focused accreditation and certification provision for institution members. Um, it increases the overall skill set of security professionals um, and software developers international, internationally. It improves the workforce, the critical infrastructure, and internet enabled technologies and applications so they're better protected. And again, by improving the skill sets of IT security professionals and software developers, overall nation states employment benefit from an increased skill pool. So, next steps. We need to bolster the education committee. We need a bit of a reboot. Um, we need to understand better what is being provided in educational settings and what OWASP's relationship to them. Uh, one of the things I intend to do is ask the OWASP staff team to, so we can develop a database of application security providers, sorry, security trainers, a database of academic supporters and contacts, and a mechanism to keep them up to date. Um, a database of the project leaders that are supporting academic curriculums, modules, products, as well as training providers, and a database of chapter leaders who they support in terms of academic programs or offer talks to for students. So what am I trying to do? That's an intended outline as a proposal. Um, we've had some talks with one or two possible funders. Um, we have, um, there's been some background work on identifying some of the learning key skills and objectives through some of the work that's been done with projects like AVS, ASVS. Um, that has a lot of the key building blocks, still doesn't replace the gap analysis from everything else I talked about, but that is a, a key building stone. Um, looking at who we should be asking, online questionnaire platforms to use, what questions should we be asking, um, the target audience, the OS leaders lists, community lists, uh, Slack channels, making sure we reach out to all chapters. How do we reach trainers? and other universities that are using OWASP content? How do we know that other training providers, um, colleges are using OWASP content? How do we know it's being built into curriculums? Um, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence to say that the OWASP top 10 features, and the fact that the OWASP top 10 is featured in things like PCI DSS um, has always been a major driving point. So if you need to know that standard, then you also need to know uh, OWASP top 10 features in some of the UK stuff in terms of um, cyber essentials, uh, but that's a, typically at its lowest level a self certification tick box. Um, and most importantly, how do we map OWASP projects 
to objectives. Okay, I think I'm sort of coming to my end of my 40, 45 minutes. Um, if you need to get hold of me, there's my Twitter feed, there's my um, uh, OWASP email address. Please do drop me a line. Um, I'm keen for people to be involved in the education to get a, a reboot going. And also people involved want to get involved in the project or want to commit. Um, I'm hoping that I will have more time after coming out of period of illness. Um, yeah. Questions, please. Okay, thank you, Adrian. That was a very, very interesting uh, talk. Um, but there are a couple of uh, things that is crossing my mind. Um, one of them is, um, so, so what about the commercial trainers? Of course, it's not only for academics, but also um, from commercial perspective. What are your thoughts on that? So we're developing an open curricula. Um, yeah, from, from my bias point of view, I, I, I'm an academic, so at first I linked it into the day job. Um, but it's wider than that because those skills, that, that curriculum is open. It can be applied to whatever uh, level and program you want to adapt. So um, if somebody wanted to offer an application, introduction to application security program, they could take aspects of an open curricula and use that. The idea is, is to in, is to have those key sets of learning objectives, those key um, skills that you need to learn, and they're available as a open curriculum that people can take bits out of to use as they want. Um, yes, there's opportunities we can do um, to set up certification, that sort of thing. But with an open curriculum, um, our idea, because we're, we're an open source organisation, so everything that we deliver, um, apart from conferences, um, is free at the point of delivery. So we can't charge people for a curriculum, but we mm. want to spread the message wider. So that's there for training providers to use. It isn't just for... Um, You've got to start some, and the other side of that argument is you've got to start somewhere. You've got to use the the security curriculum. Um, uh, a lot of our computer scientists go through formal education programs. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier in my presentation, there's a whole community of developers that never had any formal education that have learned themselves. Uh, or maybe taught by the organisation, have maybe come into software development from another route or have come into a security analyst from another route. Um, yeah. there's, a lot, there's a lot of security analysts that, have, that are on the sort of human security side as, as psychologists. So mm -hmm. a lot of them won't have had any form. So you need methods and uh, uh, specialist training providers that can deliver that to organisations. Um, it isn't always about degree programs i'm going to be first to say that because um there's a lot of formal time involved or personal investment in home thought but then there are specialist trainers that will deliver those sort of programs that can pick yeah. up because even software developers should be undergoing regular training because the same you know, from a very crude point of view um <sighs> Yep. Uh, software development programming languages change flavors change and you need to re-educate yourself and redevelop your knowledge in a um you move from c to c plus plus or you move from c plus plus to c sharp or uh you suddenly move on to um uh, java or oh, whatever yep. or, or move it to python um or ruby on rails or whatever it, um yep. so people need redeveloping so it isn't just a, it isn't just about academia it's, it's wider i'm just pinning my stripes to one part because it, it, i have to start somewhere but it's 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 it has a wider focus yep i completely agree and i, I can vouch for myself that uh, when back in those days when i started there was there was no curriculum available right it was an ad hoc kind of learning um and, and intriguing topics um, and yes, of course, uh, OWASP uh, was one of uh, the major uh, portals uh, in terms of information because there were so many collaborating towards it. Good. Um, so th there is another question here, and I think I completely agree as well. So in your perspective, um, is it enough to just hack an application 
or do you think going through an exercise on uh, let's say how an attack works or how an application works or maybe building an application which is vulnerable in nature can help. So as a student, what do you think is more beneficial from learning perspective? Both. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay, so if I was wearing my educator's hat, um, first and foremost, I'll say, I'm not specifically a software developer. I can hack some code. Hmm. It's not particularly wonderful, but it, I, I would write glue where to do jobs that I need to do. Um, but what I would say from an educational perspective is um, both being able to do black box and white box give you the all round skills you need. So from an educational perspective, what I would get students to do is build your own application. Mm -hmm. um, do a security review at each stage of that pro, um, software development life cycle and yes and then you do the black box at the end or you get someone else to black box test your application so you swap um, so two heads are always better than one because you know your code but you're not always the best person to judge your own code because you don't right. always spot your own mistakes so from both perspectives somebody else looking at your code you looking at your own code you testing your own code, someone else testing your code. So it's almost like an ideal situation. If you develop two students, develop two of their own applications, you swap the applications and you test each other's. Mm. Um, you can so both sets of skills are needed. So you, security professionals need to understand code. Um, if they can see the code and look at it. Um, the developers will understand the code better, but they might not understand security, but they both need to come together to cross that chasm. Yep. Yeah, I, I completely agree on that aspect as well. Um, maybe we can form some kind of blue team or a red team kind of yep. exercises by the end of semesters. <laughs> yep, exactly. That, that, that's the sort of thing that's, I mean, we tend to teach a lot of red team and mm. uh, that's, that's brilliant. Some of that is absolutely spot on. But it isn't, the red team stuff tends to be the end pen test. So you've got the application, it's broken, you find the vulnerabilities and you tell people, here's a vulnerability, go fix. But if you don't understand how the vulnerability could be fixed, which is where the blue team come in, have you checked the shared libraries? Have you checked um, what tools could be built into these layers of Swiss cheese that are talked about for your critical infrastructure. So has the WAF picked something up? Um, mm. Have you, I mean, a, another project that we used to run in, I suppose, um, the App Center project, which is about intrusion detection monitoring points within the software to detect the types of attacks that might be going in. So if you ever had a, um, some form of user interface, Typically, yeah. I don't cross cross site either cross site scripting if you're putting um, text in somewhere or SQL type injection anywhere where there was any direct text entry. Can you detect the type of intrusion detect that they're, that's their classic two points, but also manipulation of session IDs and all that, all those sort of things? Can your software flag that if it happens? And mm. should it detect? Um, so th there's th there's that type of education I don't think we do very well either. Um, because the focus is on security. Yep. Okay, and that's a good one as well. Um, so there are a couple of more questions related to um, something like what are the subjects that you see in the curriculum or what is a typical day for you uh, like working in AppSec? So what do I see the subjects? Uh, as, as many general principles as possible um i mean if you're talking about a sort of generic student program i think general principles about validating sanitizing input uh how not hard coding um particularly cryptographic um <laughs> yeah. in, into your code and well. what were you put yeah and comments and um those general rules of housekeeping um and knowing how if you don't, then what the effects of that are. And we've got a lot of good tools that help education establishments, but we've no idea how well they're being used. Now, I know in some of my three programs I support, we use Juice Shop. 
We use Security Shepherd. We used to use Hackademic. Um, we've used WebGoat. All brilliant tools. They, they all do a job. Um, I've used uh, DVWA, Dam Vulnerable Web App. Um, we There was another project, um, the BWA, which is the Broken Web App, which is a VM. Hmm. Um, but there are probably a lot more. Yep. And, um, and are there other courses revolving around this, which which is related to academics, for example? That, yeah. As you mentioned, like cryptography is one of them. Uh, are there others that, that, that you think can be proposed to the British Academy? I mean, that, um, I mean, I, we introduced particularly um, web application development, web application security as too specific, um, but it, it needs to be wider than that. That that's, um, depends on depends on the focus of the programs you're providing, um, but that whole application security program, um, there needs to be for those that are probably going into cybersecurity management they need to be aware of those issues not necessarily the all the coding aspects but what makes an appsec program all right what is what is devsecops it's a good starting point and shift left and all that all that sort of speak it, it, if you're going to be doing any sort of engineering type program that needs to be high high on the agenda so again one of the things that may need to evolve is targeted learning objectives for different sectors for different parts of um, the education program. Hmm. And uh, do you see any kind of uh, reluctance from uh, the institutions? Do they see the need of uh, security as a part of their curriculum? I mean, if I can only say from a UK perspective, but I guess it's from a US and international perspective, if your program is validated by any professional body, so in, in the UK, um, from a generic computer science point of view, it will probably be validated by the BCS or the IET. Um, from a more international perspective, IEEE, ACM. Uh, mm -hmm. I, ISC squared also do some accreditation, I believe. And more importantly, the um, CISEC, the new uh, uh, cybersecurity um, Chartered Institute for the, in the UK, um, has part of its initiative uh, also been forthright in pursuing the what's called CYBOC, which is the Cyber Body of Knowledge, uh, mm. which is a starting point, which it sets out. So you need, from a student point of view, and this applies to um, training providers as well, who will have de training delegates, um, what is it they're going to learn? What what how do I know what you're teaching me is going to be relevant to something? What are you, what are you targeting your training against? Um, and that, that's part of what, we, what we're missing. We haven't really got an AppSec standard of this is what we should be teaching. This is what you should know. These are the key skills that you should have. There are parts of that information in Cybok, but there is not, we don't have that, uh, OS doesn't have it. I don't think any of the other professional bodies have that. And I think because of our unique place in the industry, we can probably drive that. Hmm. Yep. Yes, I think uh, from, from academia perspective, uh, yes. Uh, but uh, how do you feel from um, from uh, different uh, commercial organizations? How I, think I, the, I, th I think there? if there's an open standard, again, if someone's paying for training, if you're paying a specialist training provider, you want to know what it is they're achieving, what your what your employees are achieving, to, to what standard are they being educated? Hmm. What is it that they're going to learn they take away? So, and I'm not, I won't mention any names, there's a lot of people that provide AppSec training, in quotes, in quotes, OWASP standard. And hmm. what that means for some of them is, here's the OWASP top 10, I'm going to teach you the OWASP top 10. Um, I will possibly teach you how to fix some of the OS top 10 vulnerabilities, but it's all based around that. No, yeah. there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but what is that saying? The OS top 10 is brilliant. 
yep. but it is just the top 10 vulnerabilities. <laughs> there are <laughs> countless others. So that it, is true. That, it doesn't necessarily teach you everything you need to know. Yep. Awareness of it and everything that comes out of it is great, but is it, do, is it doing the whole job? So, um, and, and training providers are saying, uh, OWAS certified training because we're teaching the OWAS top 10. Well, yes and no. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot missing from that because you're basically you're not necessarily discussing the basic principles. It might be that someone's teaching the OWAS top 10 and they pull in WebGoat. WebGoat's a great project, mm -hmm. um, as is Juice Shop. Uh, but it's, they are so much more than just the top 10. And, th cool. and things drop in and drop out of the OWAS top 10. I think apart from SQL injection and cross-site scripting, things <laughs> change and things. So, yeah, it, it, it needs... Yeah. So I, I, th there is an opportunity for the commercial train providers to really benefit from this type of work as well. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you, you're right. I think uh, OS Top 10 has been uh, one of the standards which is adopted in a lot of compliance bodies as well, including, let's say, PCI DSS, um, like, okay, are you compliant by, by OS Top 10? But yes, what is OS Top 10 and, and are there other vulnerabilities and what are the risks revolving around it? That is true. Um, and what do you think about at which level in a company um, these things should be injecting? I mean, a typical question, you know, uh, with the different transformations happening around with respect to DevSecOps, for example, um, how do you see on which level it, it should be important for people to understand that, yes, there should be a curriculum and security education is important? I mean, it's horses for courses, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and some of this is yeah. some of... The, oh, so basically, um, trying to think about this. Um, so the board, senior managers need to be maybe don't need to know the the tech or the technical detail, but they need to need, have a strong overview that security needs to be part of any development program. Security is not just done at the end; it's not part of the end user test or the beta test or and uh, it. Um, as part of a development process, you need security people involved at the requirements gathering. Uh, so things like um, oh, um, threat modeling um, early on. So you diagrammatically see, let's say, this is how we might build a system, these are the requirements, but where might the threat points be? So the early, and that's part of the education program, knowing what tools might apply at different stages and where you go to to get that education so sometimes it, it comes back to the signposts and the mapping and uh knowing that at a high level helps you build the security culture into your organization so you it, it, you develop different sets of criteria for different parts of an organization and that is perhaps a longer further goal further down the road yes Yes, I think uh, from from process perspective as well, it is also really important that it should have. But uh, you know, there are changes which are happening in the organization, and that is a good point or good injection point, I would say, to to include security education as as, yeah. as well in, in the overall changes. Yep. Okay. Um, there are a couple of more questions. Uh, for example. Um, how did the, or let's say, what's, what's your impression from the industry about your proposal? So what's, what's the? Impression. From? The industry. Of when um, I mean, the, the initial discussions I've had, I've said that the, there is a need for that, um, or that coordination. Funding it is a different other matter, but there's definitely a need for something to pull that, and that's something that OWAS is well placed to do. Mm -hmm. And it should should these courses be um, targeting to a language, or should it be language uh, agnostic, or, or you know, it should be technology agnostic, for example. It should be technology agnostic, but taking take a viewpoint that different development languages, different techniques exist, and it's get it's it's about ensuring that people. Um, um, and we need to get different, um, different 
uh, organisations involved um, to sort of point that out. But yeah, it needs to be technology agnostic, but it also needs to be, uh, I don't know, it's language agnostic. I mean, lots of the sort of tools that we have in the organisation are have been translated into other languages. Mm. So you see, I think, yeah, start with, start with the most popular languages and then you can um, translate as needed. Okay. Um, and what, what do you think should be the medium of communication or delivering this uh, curriculum? It should be multimedia based, like, uh, you know, a lot of others uh, who are doing e-learning is also having some kind of uh, pre-recorded courses or let's say some practical that, applications. That, 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 that is down. I mean, the, the curric a, a curriculum will just be a set of learning objectives, links to the tools, typical type of content it's not the actual material um it's a first step into developing that material or to link mm. into what already exists so okay. it's not really whether it's multimedia or anything like it's at the moment it's it's having the building blocks in the first place that you can adapt and organizations can adapt yep and and do you have any suggestions uh for the research students how do they proceed in an appropriate way um you know, because this is this thing is now building up. Um, and what, what are your thoughts on on the current uh, status? At the moment, because there's very little standardization, um, people are building. That's why people just use the OVAS Top Ten and as as their building tool. But there's so much more material that we could use. So it, 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 that, 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 that's what it, it, the stepping stones are trying to build on that material um, and provide the links to what's there and identifying what the gaps are so that you can mm. fill those um, places. Yep. Uh, anyways, I mean, uh, OWASP is uh, having a plethora of information as well in terms of uh, how to do secure coding, for example, on how on, on uh, how you can actually exploit a particular vulnerability or identify a vulnerability in a, a lot of uh, applications as well, as yeah. you pointed out earlier in yeah. your talk. It, it, you know, it's, about, it's about links to that information because there's a lot of information, but it's, okay. not co it's not necessarily coordinated enough to pull it together. And that, that, that's because everyone needs education, continuing education, so that needs, the part of it is to bring all of it under some sort of umbrella. Yeah. And then keep it going as well, right? Because there are yeah. things which are changing, oh, yeah. as you said. Yes. Things are changing all the time, and, it, and it's keeping abreast of those changes and keeping that updated. Yeah. 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 And with, with the new advent of technologies, like, you know, um, the standardization of, uh, of uh, maybe classification of tools and uh, more and more use of cloud, there might be changes in uh, application security as well. Oh, yeah, there's bound to be, we, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As we were also seeing in one of the keynotes, like, uh, you know, things are going to change and maybe uh, um, I am based uh, issues will be more important um, from architecture, from architecture perspective. So it is yeah. really important to understand how security works. And if you inculcate in a curriculum, it is the best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, nearing uh, the top of the hour uh, and thank you for uh, such a wonderful talk and plethora of information for us. Um, and thank you to all the attendees for, for, posing up questions and uh, being an interactive audience. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, I think you can reach out to, um, to uh, Adrian uh, on his Twitter handle or to his email. And uh, yes, enjoy the rest of the, um, of the conference um, and happy hacking. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Amit. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.